Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about how to put zipper heads onto zippers. So if you're buying your zippers like this rather than finished zippers in various sizes, but you're buying a whole roll, which I chose to do because I didn't know the length I wanted for sure. And I wanted to be able to make different sizes. So I had to learn how to do this. I didn't even think about it until the zipper, this all came in that I realized I got to learn how to put these zipper heads on here. And I fought with them for a little bit, then finally looked it up on YouTube and found a video that was pretty good explaining how to do it that I'll link to down below if you want to watch how she does it. But I wanted to go ahead and show you how I do it and also in reference to when you're doing it in the form of making this little bag. So I'm going to explain real quickly how to make the bag super simple. Like here's a piece right here I have ready to go. So I very carefully ironed down the edges. You want to make sure when you're ironing, ironing the PUL because these are for snack bags. So if you're doing something like this where you're making the reusable snack slash sandwich bags you want to get the PUL but you got to realize this is polyurethane so when you go to iron it you do not want your iron touching this side it's easier to see what you're doing when you do it this way but you're more apt to have the iron come in contact with this so I fold it under I lay it this way and fold it under and then iron it that's going to make it much easier when you go to sew your zipper on and then what I do is here's one that's partially finished is Let's take this zipper head off of here. Is then I take each individual zipper piece that I cut just a little bit longer than the width of the bag itself. And I only re I, I trimmed this after I sewed it on there. I trimmed the edges I'm gonna put into the zipper head. I didn't trim these. You wanna leave a little bit of length and I'll explain why in a bit. But when you sew that on there, you want to make sure that you sew it so that the top of the fabric, the right side of the fabric, is laying face up and you've got that part that you ironed down and folded on top of the right side of the zipper like this. So I found it much easier to sew the zipper on in halves like this then put the zipper head on. So you can make your little bags whatever shape, size, whatever it is that you want. But these basics, I think, to make it easier to do do this first put those zipper halves on there first so cut your zipper to the length you want it like i did with these pieces here they're already cut the length i want and you'll see that all of them i allowed plenty you don't really have to cut it as quite as long as i did but i still allowed plenty of hangover so that's a that's more than i needed but that's just to make sure i have that extra in case the zipper doesn't perfectly line up which most likely it won't so then what you do is then you just simply start from whatever end and then pull the zipper apart like that just just like that and then you're going to sew it onto your bags or whatever it is that you're making so now let's go ahead and get to this zipper pull and how you apply it to the zipper or at least one way to do it. So you can see here right now I'm using a big heavy book and I've got a salad fork. I found a salad fork to be perfect for this because it's got the right width, at least the ones I have, between the tines to make this work. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your zipper pull, your fork is gonna be facing up like this and you're going to put the zipper pull, you don't put the tines through the zipper, but you put the zipper pull so that the this part here itself, or the zipper head, so that the pull is in the back and the zipper head is in the front. That's gonna help hold it secure and in place when you go to line up your zipper. So now I'm gonna move the camera down so you can get a better angle. I'll show this again. So one thing you might wanna have is something heavy to lay on top of the fork handle or a clamp even. If you have an edge that you can just clamp that in place, that might be helpful. I don't always do this. Normally I, find, I just kind of push it up against my body and find that works well. So let me go ahead and put that zipper head onto the fork again. So you want the pull behind the fork and the zipper head in front, again, making sure that's in the center. You don't want the tines of the fork going through the zipper head or you won't be able to get your zipper in there. Now here's where it gets tricky is notice the, the direction I have this facing. This is important. 
So this is the back of the zipper head, so I've got the back of the zipper facing me. So that's one of your important steps. Another important step, now notice I've been doing this several times for demonstration because I was showing some other people recently. So it's a little frayed. You may need to cut that off if you have any frays. Also, if you put that zipper pull down, like that's usually how I do it, that keeps it up higher so it makes it easier to do. And so you want each side of the zipper to go into the zipper head at the same time. And if one st part starts to slide through like this and you're not getting the other part through, pull it back out and just keep doing that until they start to, until you're able to get them to go through the right timing and they start to catch. And then you should be able to push it through like that. And then you can take your fork and just push it like that to where you want it. Now you can see right here, this isn't perfectly lined up. This is why I leave a little extra at the end. And another reason why you don't want to stitch your edge sides down on your bag until after you get your zipper in place. Now you can redo that, but you can redo it over and over and still have it be off a little bit. But as long as you leave this open, when you're stitching it, I say pull that zipper up as far as you can and still leave you room to sew without hitting that zipper pull then it should end up pretty straight and that won't matter because you're going to be stitching right over the top of this and right over the top of this and I'll show you that with this bag by turning it inside out. So you simply do a straight stitch here. I always go over this part several times and this is a nylon zipper so I don't have to worry about breaking my needle so much and then I always go over this several times down here. And same thing here. Once you have it stitched down really good, you might want to trim those corners to make them a little more square when you go to turn it right side out. You're still going to end up with a little bit of it coming in like so. And that's okay. See, it's like that on each side. So I want to demonstrate this a couple more times, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate it on just a plain zipper that hasn't been uh, gone through so many times. I wanted to show you it once on the bag so you could see the direction the bag should be facing. So again, you're gonna want the backs of the zipper, let's see here, the back of the zipper facing you, and again, the back of the zipper head. So making sure that the zipper pull itself is facing down when you do that because that'll just make it hold in place better. You can always flip it down after you get it on here. It holds it higher up on the tines of the fork. It may not be perfectly straight. As you can see now, this is uh, angled that way. That's okay. Just, just follow that same angle with your zipper. Making sure, again, you're coming in at an angle this way and try to get them to go in at the same exact time. Because if it doesn't, it's just one side's going to go through, like what's happening here to the right side, and the other side's not. Sometimes it just catches and it doesn't want to slide through, so you might have to just keep working with it. And then, sometimes I can do this and it just goes right in there, and sometimes not. But it's okay. Again, it's one of those things that just takes a little bit of practice, you know, to, to keep repeating the action over and over again. So let me do it one more time, putting the fork under here so that it holds steady. That just makes it easier if you have something to brace it with. Sometimes I find some of these things can get in the way and be a little more troublesome, but this book, I hadn't tried it before this video, I hadn't tried it with a big heavy book, and this is working better than other things I tried that kept getting in my way. So zipper head, making sure you're not going through the tines, and the zipper with the back facing you, and trying to get those to go in at the same same time remember just keep pulling it out and then trying it again until it catches and then usually I just grab the fork and just push the fork that's kind of the easiest way to make sure it's fully on there before you uh, <laughs> let go of it and then uh, handle it this way and there you have it so that it's actually a pretty good method. So just a fork is all you need and maybe something heavy to brace it. And like I said, I don't always use something to 
If I'm sitting at the sewing machine, I actually just pull the fork up against my body so it's braced against something. And then I don't have to work around an object. And that might be easier for you. I find that easier when I'm working at the sewing machine. And there you go. That's how you put a zipper head, or at least how I learned how to do it from that video I'll be linking to in the description box down below, assuming I can find it again. And I hope you found that helpful and a little quick tutorial on the bags, super easy to do. And so if you're wanting to make your own snack slash sandwich bag, oh, and I, I forgot to say, this material, um, it's kind of, you can find it in solid colors. I was looking specifically for trucks. And this was the best I could find were the racing trucks because I was making these for Jackson and then Jace, my other grandson that's coming real soon. But there's lots of different fabrics. As you can see, the, the beach fabric here that I, I showed you, there's cupcakes, there's flowers. I found a lot of girly fabrics, more so than the, the more masculine ones. But there's a lot of different ones out there, and that is a PUL, or polyurethane, or also called a laminate. I use the PUL in solid colors for a backing for feminine napkins. It can be used to make diaper covers and also as the backing for bibs. So I get this fabric. Most of the fabrics I do end up buying, I purchase from fabric.com. And the, one of the reasons I like that place is they have a good variety of fabrics you can do a search there and if it's something where you're going to need at least three yards anyway you can almost always get a discount if you go with at least three yards at a time some fabrics might have as little as two yards some might be as much as four it depends on the fabric most of them though it's three yards i picked this one i was originally going to go with a charcoal gray background but the reason i bought this one it was on clearance and so i got a really good deal on that one but anyway, fabric.com, I'll put a link to that down below. And you get free shipping too if you order over, I can't remember, it's $35 or $50, one of the two. And you can buy yarns and other notions there as well. So anyway, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.